Princess Puppy Ballet Shoes. The glass doors of the sitting room at Honeysuckle Cottage were open to the garden. Puppy danced and floated around the sunlit room. My new ballet shoes are a perfect fit, Mom, she called. Puppy pointed her toes, held onto the sofa as a bar, and practiced her foot positions. She did a pirouette and then curtsied to her audience of nodding flowers in the garden beyond. Madam Angel Wing is choosing parts for the big show today, Poppy told her mom. I just know I'm going to be Capellia, a living dancing doll, she said. Don't be too sure, warned mom. Worried that Poppy would be disappointed if she wasn't picked. The person who dances the best on the day will be chosen. It has to be me, laughed Poppy. I am the best dancer by far. And Cousin Saffron is going to make me my own beautiful Capellia dress. As they were leaving for the audition, Poppy saw that her best friend Honey was at the garden gate. Honey, why don't you come to ballet with me? called Puppy. Madam Angel Wing needs some extra villagers for the street scene in Capellia. Honey had never been to ballet before. Well, you do love to dance, don't you, Honey? said Granny Bumble. I do, Honey said and dashed off in the direction of her house to find something pretty to wear to her first ballet class. They arrived at the Lavender Lake School of Dance and found Madame Angel Wing in a very excited state. To Simon, she called to the pianist, who was playing too quickly. Arabesque, not jeté, she cried to an older girl in a pink leotard. Honey thought this was all very strange and a bit scary too, but she did love the way the dancers moved so gracefully across the floor. Bobby, said the teacher, clapping her hands quickly above her head. Dance for me, now! Bobby wasn't at all nervous, and she began to twirl and jump, just as she had practiced in her own sitting room. Bravo, bravo, cried Madden, clapping. And who is this new girl? she asked, looking at Honey. I, I, I'm Honey, stammered Honey, looking a bit red and scared. Well, Honey, let me see you dance, demanded Madam Angel Wing. Honey began to glide across the dance floor. She moved like a fairy glittering round on light, silky wings. Everyone fell silent as they watched her dainty jumps and spins. Madam glided across the dance floor to Honey and stood by the bar. Honey, you move like a natural dancer. You, child, will dance Capellia, she announced. Poppy's mouth dropped open in amazement, but Honey was only meant to be a villager. I should be Coppelia. I am Coppelia, thought Poppy furiously. Mom put an arm around Poppy. Let's go and say, well done to Honey, shall we? She suggested, but Poppy couldn't. She burst into tears of anger and disappointment. And something else, it was a feeling that she couldn't understand. She was annoyed with herself from bringing Honey along to her ballet class. For the next few days, Poppy refused to play with Honey. Instead, she imagined that her dolls and toys had come to life, just like the doll in the story of Capellia. You would never steal my part in the show, would you, Ruby? 
she said to her big rag doll. Poppy felt even worse when she looked over her garden gate and saw Honey playing with a new friend, Mimosa, whose parents owned the Hedgerow's Hotel in Honeypot Hill. It was bad enough to lose the part of Capella, but to lose her best friend was unbearable. When Grandpa came around, Poppy flung her arms around him and cried. She cried about the ballet show, but mostly she cried because she missed Honey. Poppy, said Grandpa, you will always be my little star. But you can't always be the star of the show. You are my princess, Poppy, and to be a true princess, you need to be kind and generous to your friends. I do miss Honey, sniffed Poppy. And Honey misses you too, said Grandpa. Why don't you go and make friends with her again? But the next day at ballet class, Poppy was surprised to find that Honey wasn't there. Girls, said Madam, Honey has a bad tummy ache, so she cannot dance the part of Coppelia. Instead, the Coppelia for tomorrow's big show will be... Mademoiselle Puppy. Puppy was thrilled. She couldn't believe it. But then she thought about Honey and how disappointed she would be not to dance in the show. Mom, could I take some flowers to Honey? Puppy asked after class. What a lovely idea, said Puppy's mom. Puppy, squealed Honey with delight as her friend came into her room. Poppy smiled and handed the flowers to Honey. Honey, I think you would have been a lovely Capellia, said Poppy. Oh, I wish you were well enough to dance the part. Honey gave Poppy a big hug. And all of a sudden, Honey felt so much better. Honey felt well enough to dance Capellia at the big show, and she danced it beautifully. Everyone said that she was the most graceful ballerina they had ever seen. Poppy danced the part of Swanahild, wearing satin shoes and a beautiful pink tutu made especially for her by Saffron. Everyone clapped as Poppy twirled lightly around the stage. At the end of the show, Honey was given a posy of sweet-smelling flowers. She broke open the posy and gave half of it to Poppy. They curtsied together and hugged, glad to be friends again. After the show, Grandpa came backstage. Poppy, you were wonderful, he told her. Oh, thank you, Grandpa. I'm so glad they made a good job of my part. Even though it was smaller than Honey's, I was so important in the story, wasn't I? Asked Poppy. Darling, there wouldn't have been a story without you, replied Grandpa, my little ballerina princess Poppy.